Hey, bonjour YouTube. I was recently interviewed by Julien Marchand for his podcast, Working Dads. And I talk about more personal stuff about my life. So it's a good opportunity for you to get to know me a little bit better. Uh, we recorded this whole podcast interview and this is the video today. In this video, I will cover a lot of things on my personal life, like you're gonna get to know me and knowing what is important for me. I will share details about my work-life balance and my life balance in general. At some point in the video, I'm going to share also the family rules that we have with Sherry and Luca. I mean, Luca don't really have the choice at this point. Also, I will give practical examples of how I use the jar of life. You remember the jar of life, right? And towards the end of the video, I'm going to share why I created Time Flies in the first place and also why it's important to welcome change. And at the very end, I'm gonna give some details about the Time Back Bootcamp program that I started enrolling people in. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to skip through the video to go to the important stuff, to the things that are of interest for you. Enjoy this conversation with Julien. Hi everyone. Uh, so my guest today is uh, Hugo Donat and uh, I met Hugo online through LinkedIn. I saw some of his videos and fell into his YouTube channel on productivity and um, and then I think one day uh, Hugo shared a video with his son Lucas, who was probably three months at a time, and like, okay, I need him on the podcast. <laughs> so, um, do you want to introduce yourself quickly, uh, introduce us to your work, and also introduce us to your family and to Lucas? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, thank you for having me on the show. I'm really, uh, I'm really happy that uh, that you're bringing me here. Um, so I'm Hugo. I'm a consultant and coach on uh, time management and productivity. And, uh, and so let me talk to you about uh, how I got into, uh, into this besides, besides having my whole career in consulting. Basically, it all started like four years ago uh, on the personal side when I was on a trip to Central America. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really close to burnout. I've been working for six years at that time and I just I was really close to burnout and I decided to quit my job and put everything uh, behind me uh, and I needed to completely reset. How old were uh, you at the time? Um, it was in 2015, so like four years ago, I was 20, uh, 26, mm. 26, 27. That's early, man. Yeah, and out. yeah, no, no, I wasn't really burning out, but I was really close to it. I, I was trying to... Uh, to, to being very uh, aware of my of my sensation and uh, and, and everything and uh, and I felt like I, I needed a change. Uh, it wasn't only on the on the professional side; it was also on the personal side. Everything needed a reset. So I I just uh, I'm passionate about traveling, and when I need a reset, I just go. I just need to go and to put myself in a new environment, and that's what I did. I went to uh, to uh, Central America backpacking by myself for two to three months and that's where i met sherry my partner now and uh we we just met there uh, very genuinely we got to know each other a little bit and since then we just facetimed every every day since then because she was she's american she yeah. lives in uh, in san diego yeah. and uh and i was in france at that time and for a year and a half we did we dated internationally we facetime every single year and Two years ago, we decided to uh, make the move, and I came to San Diego, and now we have baby Luca. He's five months old. Jeez! <laughs> wow, what a story, man! One point, one and a half year, uh, long distance um, after being so close to each other, um, backpacking. Yeah, yeah, but we, we we had to see each other like every other month for like ten days. So either I was coming here or she ah, she okay. came to visit yeah, yeah. me. So. Uh, she came to visit me uh, even a couple months uh, at, at once. So that, that allowed us to get even closer and closer. Cool. So um, tell us, so now you've got Lucas is five months old. Um, you've got your, your own job as, um, as, as a freelancer and yeah. also running your own, um, your own business on productivity with Time Flies. Um, yeah. Lucas is brand new in that, in that picture. How, um, 
why do you see the need to balance your professional life and your family now? So I think there is something that I need to point out to start with is that family is the most important thing, period. So we could end the postcard episode right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most, everything, everything that I do aside from the family is to sustain my life with my family. So mm. I think that's one of the most important thing. Where I come from in the south of France, um, my, my family is very close to each other. I, I was seeing my cousins every day. Uh, wow. I'm very close to my sister, to my parents. We all live, uh, we all lived in a 10 minutes walk radius from each other. So uh, I grew up in this kind of environment where family is very strong. So yeah. um, being a dad uh, it was a goal for my, in, in my life. And uh, that was really important. So when Luca came into this world, um, then every priority that I had before kind of shifted. Um, so yeah, that's something that is that is very important to uh, to to uh, to set. <laughs> so <laughs> you you were saying that being a good dad was already your goal. Did you find that your own dad was like the role model to follow? Did you have a strong model to follow? Yeah, I think I'm blessed. Uh, I'm blessed uh, with the parents that I had. Um, <clears throat> never had any. Uh, any any issues with my parents? Uh, I come from a very loving family. My dad was very very loving, even though even though my parents got divorced when I was less than ten years old. Um, it's um, I um, I had I have still have very good relationship for, with both of my parents. So I can say that my dad has been a role model for me. Yeah, for sure. Ah, oh, awesome. And so so okay. So this is really like. What does your balance look like at the moment? Um, because do you work from home or do you go to the office? And uh, I'm assuming um, Lucas is always home. Like that's all the assumption I put in my head. Yes. Uh, so I have to go to my client uh, almost every day, every workday, uh, and I have my side business, uh, my own business that I, that I'm uh, that I've been starting this past year, with that your know, YouTube channel is is part of it. Mm -hmm. I know we'll talk about it later. Um, so I've been starting doing my, my YouTube channel like a year ago uh, where I've been setting myself a goal for 2019, setting, uh, uploading one video a week, every single week on top of my regular job. Uh, Whoa, so that's 52 videos, man. And your video was well edited. Like they're really good quality. <laughs> I really like them. I always like with traveling, I, I was always uh, editing my videos. So uh, just for on personal side. So I loved editing. So that's how I also got into YouTube. Yeah. Um, but um, yes, I set myself this, this amazing goal to, to put 52 videos the next year. And when I set a goal for myself, I'm very disciplined about it. Uh, so there, there was no way around that. So when Luca came into the picture, mm -hmm. we got a like some months to prepare. We knew it was coming around <laughs> June. Uh, so it's not as if like it's coming like in a snapshot. So I had to plan to prepare my schedule around it to make sure that I have time for supporting uh, Sherry, my partner and Luca when, even before Luca gets here. So what I did uh, on top of my regular job, I planned some buffer in terms of videos number of videos to make sure that I had three months of content already shot and half oh, wow. edited. Yeah, okay. that was a lot, a lot of hustle to actually get to this buffer, but that gave me so much flexibility. When Luca was here, I was able to take some time for him for, to support, to support uh, Sherry uh, when she, when she needed. And I, so, I, I imagine that uh, parents who lives in the US is, is what, six months to 12 months all paid by the government? <laughs> <laughs> Family leave um, and you have actually 12 weeks paid 60% of your salary in the first year. So it's not that bad. But yep. the thing is, uh, Sherry not working while she uh, like close to uh, giving birth and, and after that. Uh, we could not sustain at 60% of my salary for the, yeah. for the family. So uh, I, I took three weeks, which is already kind of good, and, and tried to be as flexible as, as possible, not to spend too much time on my videos, uh, thanks to the buffer that I created. So you really put yourself into that position. And so how do you, what does your balance look like at the moment? Um, 
do you um, do you look after him during the day or do you, have a, do you have a nanny or how does it work? So we don't have a nanny and we are both entrepreneurs, my wife and I. Uh, so Sherry is a Pilates instructor and she's, she's uh, working on, um, on growing her business, on her Pilates business. And she's taking care of Luca the whole day uh, yeah. by herself while I'm at work. Okay. And uh, and me managing both jobs and her managing Luca and 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 uh, and her business, so managing th both jobs at the same time. <laughs> so we kind of have our routine. I think routine is important. Having a structure, and that's good because having a structure in our days as adults is very much aligned with the need of the baby needing a routine yep. himself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we are currently sleep training. Uh, so being having him on the clock, and we're very blessed because he sleeps uh, pretty good. So we put we put him to bed at eight, uh, at eight at night. Uh, he usually needs just one uh, uh, one time support during the night, whether it's at four a.m. or or five ish, and then he sleeps until like seven in the morning. So we're oh pretty blessed. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And he starts yeah. taking like. And he starts taking good naps to like a one to two hours naps, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's very recent. Uh, so is, that, is, he on the question, is he on a baby bottle yet or? Uh, she's breastfeeding. Uh, she's uh, mostly breastfeeding, but you, we yeah. use bottles. Uh, we use bottles for, um, but with breast milk uh, in order for me to be able to take some shifts because the first exactly. months were pretty tough for her. So I was trying to be as, as supportive as possible. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, to answer your question, I'm basically going to work. Um, I'm leaving around eight in the morning, and I'm I'm back uh, around six. Uh, so she's the whole day with him. And usually, what happens when when I come back is basically she takes the baby, <laughs> and she hears into it. Yeah, as you can expect, so I've been with him the whole day. She has a little bit of help from her mom, from her sister, yeah. um, but uh, she's mainly the, the, the main. Um, the main person Error. that takes care yeah. of him. Don't have yeah, a name. Yeah. Uh, so what is important for me when I go back is I could go back home and do some more work. There is always more work to be done, but mm -hmm. it's important for me to kind of reset and to really focus on um, on him and on my wife. So we have some kind of this, uh, this rule where kind of the first hour when I go back from work, there is no, no phone, no technology, no social media, and it's just us. Um, so whether it's just me and Luca so that, so that uh, Sherry can do whatever she couldn't do yeah. Uh, yeah. this whole time, or she can actually take a nap. Uh, sometimes she takes a nap at, at 6 p.m. because she's exhausted. She couldn't really take yeah. a nap during the day. Um, and uh, yeah, basically we have this, uh, this kind of rule where um, we're just here for each other. And I, I try not to multitask. When he requires my attention, I'm not giving half of my attention. I'm giving, giving my full attention and not trying to do too many things at the same time. Wow, that's pretty good uh, for the, on, on the first baby and like so early on. So where do you get that advice from? Uh, I'm a self-learner. So mm -hmm. I think I, I, I read a lot. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and, um, and you know, when you're in this new environment, things that are completely new, you try to grab as many information as possible. So I can't say I have one resource, uh, mm -hmm. but I grab tips here and there, but I think it's, um, it's for me, it's pretty common sense that, um, technology screens, uh, and, uh, every, and, uh, and everything, uh, in, in this environment is not, is not good and doesn't really help with human connection and quality time and uh i can say something also is that we communicate a lot with uh with sherry and in order to bring our uh relationship not as parents but as lovers and partners to the next level we uh we uh investigated the five uh language of love languages of love i don't know okay. if you heard of it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the five language of love and she, she's, um, love languages. Yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> Cause I knew this in French before and then, uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, and what is very important for her is quality time. That's one of the, uh, the, the languages of love that is, that is really important for her. So, uh, it was kind of, um, 
uh, common sense for her for us to to have at least once a day quality time with having half an hour an hour um, without screen and just just us and we brought this to the next level a few mm -hmm. weeks ago when we decided that was actually uh, Sherry's idea because we work so much work day and the weekend and we said okay Saturday now is family time we're not allowed to work because uh, as a Pilates instructor she will be working a lot on weekends yeah, she would mm -hmm. take clients on weekends or she would uh, work on her social media to or on her social pre presence or update her website or prepare some training videos. And, and I have also my videos that I need to create or <laughs> I'm currently preparing my, my uh, online training. Uh, there is always things to do. And Saturday now for the past three or four weeks, it's family time. We are not allowed to work and it's been great. Yes? Yeah. It's, uh, it's so refreshing and also not having constantly on mind. I don't know if your audience is, um, uh, are, uh, they are entrepreneurs or if they are um, corporate work, um, co have corporate jobs. Um, yeah, but when you're an entrepreneur, it's, uh, it can be uh, uh, constant. You're always yeah. thinking about your work. You know yeah, that. It's hard, to, it's hard to switch off. <laughs> exactly. So Saturday, no more work. And wow. it's been really good. Awesome. So, and do you plan on continuing this type of balance or do you even plan an even more ideal balance where let's, let's go crazy, the whole weekend is for the family? Uh, that, could be, um, that could be a good idea. Uh, I don't know how this will work in the current mm. setting at this point uh, because I have a client that requires my attention five days a week. Uh, Already? Almost wow, 40, yeah. 40 hours a week, yeah. So I'm doing freelancing for them, but it's, uh, it's close to a full-time job, uh, yeah. time-wise. Uh, but to answer your question, it might evolve. Yeah, it might evolve, yes, um, because balance is constantly changing. It's constantly evolving, right? Yes. So I like to use the analogy of the life of jar. I don't know if... Uh, okay. The jar no. of life, the jar of life, not the life of jar. I'm always like confusing words, like switching words. Uh, <laughs> So the jar of life is, I don't know if you've seen this video uh, and I actually remade uh, a video on my YouTube channel to explain what the jar of life is. It's basically you have a jar uh, where you put rocks in there. So you have the big rocks that represent the family, the really the, 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 what is truly important for you that, uh, that money cannot buy. Whether it's family, whether it's your passion, whether it's everything that money can buy. Then what is, you it, have the what is it? What is it for you? What are those big rocks for you? Uh, it's family, sustaining sustaining uh, our life, um, our life with having a current income with my with my freelance job, and uh, and my side business. So these are the three rocks today that are the most important things and. Because I had these rocks, I needed to prioritize them against the pebbles, the smaller rocks that are the necessary things, the things that you need to have, you feel that you need to have in your life to sustain your rhythm or to, uh, to the things that you really enjoy doing, uh, <clears throat> but are not truly, truly the most important things. And then you have the sand that uh that is the fluff all the time westers all the things that give you an instant gratification but they are not really aligned to your goals netflix so, <laughs> exactly i always use netflix as, as, as an example because yes you can have a great time but at the end is by nature pretty empty <clears throat> so the thing is with the jar of life is if you stop putting the sand first you don't have any more room for pebbles or for the rocks and you end up having a rock outside of the jar and you don't know what to do with it and you prioritize everything else before what is truly important and that's that's what a lot of people do unconsciously so i'm i'm trying to always be conscious of that metaphor and putting the rocks first and that's the thing with the jar of life you always need to have the rocks at any time in the jar so that's something and, you do yeah. weekly because so you're doing categorizations of task and activity and then you plan when to do them i mean that's that's what that metaphor yeah. is so do you do it like on a monthly basis or are you now trained that you actually do it naturally all the time 
I, now I feel like I'm, no, I'm doing it naturally all the time, but I'm mostly at every life changing events. Like really okay. when you have something like really something shifting in your life, it doesn't have to be like a baby or, or something as big as this, but when you feel like you are kind of uncomfortable and you feel like you're not in control and you don't have enough time, then it's time to reprioritizing. I'm really, uh, I, um, I'm, uh, I have pretty strong opinion about people saying not they don't have enough time. I don't mm. believe that at all. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of my main message on my YouTube channel and my, in my work is that you don't have time, you make time. Yes. Everything is about priorities. When people say they don't have time to see you, it's just that you're not high enough in the priority list. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's fine. And that's fine, right? Conscious yes. of it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. There is no judgment about that. But yeah. when you look at yourself and your time, you have time. You just, it's just put the things in the right order. And my big rocks, I put them first. And then a lot of my friends I used to spend a lot of time with, they've been naturally deprioritized because of the baby. And I'm fine with that. And they're fine with that too. We spend less time with each other. I used to go have a drink on a weekly basis with them. Now it's once a month or maybe once every other month because, yeah. um, because I have other priorities and having my big rocks in the jar is what makes me happy. Awesome. I like what you say. I don't believe that when people say they don't have time, it's, it's about having the right priorities. Yeah. But I, and so I guess it, it's going through that exercise of being conscious of how we spend our time and making the decision of which one's going to be the three rocks. And is that going to be, does it have to be three rocks? Does it have to be three top priorities or because there's a no, limit to how many? I, at this, at, at this point, I think it's personal preference. I like to use three because you always have, it's kind of a balanced number. Um, but if you have four, that's fine. If you have five, that's fine. If, they, if you have five big rocks that don't require as much as, as attention, uh, it's, it's possible. As long as everything that works for you, as long as it's a limited number, uh, these are your limited topics, limited, um, areas where you need to spend your time on that money you cannot buy. Yes. Awesome. And one thing I would like to add is, um, um, when we were preparing that, that episode, I, um, we were talking about, yeah, I didn't have so much of challenges when Luca came. Um, uh, of course, having a baby, it's, it's always a challenge. You, you, when you feel that you're prepared, you, uh, you never prepared, right? You never yeah. really prepared. I, I'd love to talk to Sherry to check if, if she was thinking the same way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I think, I mean, everything comes from a loving place. We communicate a lot and we try to anticipate uh, a lot. But when you know where your time goes, then everything may, uh, everything falls uh, falls into place much more easily. So I think that's that's uh, that's something that uh, your audience needs needs to be aware of. I think is that they need to know where their time goes, and that's also aligned with um, what the, the the work you're doing with them with deep work and everything. So you know where your time goes. You know when you're at work, you need to be focused on the work you're doing so that you don't spend too much time at work and you have more time with your other duties of being a dad and everything <clears throat> so when you know where your time goes that gives you all the tools to actually be finally really accountable for your life and 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 be really in control uh, yeah, and, that, and that's what I like because that's what I like. That's exactly what your 52 plus videos are all about. They're like specific examples, specific techniques, practical um, things to, to implement about saving that time. So I really recommend. So the name of your YouTube channel is Time Flies. Time Flies. Yeah. yeah. If you uh, if you research in uh, in uh, YouTube, Time Flies, Time Management, you'll find me. Yeah. And that's where your area expertise come from as well. So it's really leveraging your, your, your expertise. Yeah. Uh, th yeah, exactly. But that's, um, that's because I've been a, a business consultant, uh, for 10 years now, uh, always working with, uh, with companies and making them more, making them more efficient, streamline their processes. 
And uh, I always encountered clients when they said, I don't have time. That's great, the solutions you want to provide, but I don't have time, which is so frustrated, mm. frustrating for me because the solution I want to suggest and I want us to implement together is going to make you save time. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's kind of like backwards. And I wanted to use the expertise I have and apply it on the, at a more personal level yeah. to use all these uh, very tactical uh, techniques to help you get more time. I think what, what we've seen on the podcast and what I see from the audience is you cannot impose those things on someone else. So you cannot impose it on a client. It, they really need to have that shift of mindset where they want to fix their problem. Right? Like they realize something is going wrong. Like kind of the same thing that happened when you wanted to hit the reset button and you went to, to South America. It's yeah. only at that stage we, we can really help them. If That's true. You need to have a burning platform. You need to have like a need to change. Otherwise they won't change. So there are all the success factors for, for uh, uh, the change to be successful in the corporate environment. That's for sure. And that's one of them, the need for change. If they... If they're comfortable, if uh, if they are not hitting that tipping point where like there is a need for change, they might never yeah, change yeah. and kind of stay in this uncomfortableness. But you know, when you have uh, a small rock or a small stone in your shoes, true, yeah, you can walk with it. But when you ask to run a marathon, mm -hmm. you need some change. You need to remove it from your shoe. Um, and I think that's that's what I'm trying to do with the podcast as well is is by hearing the stories of other dad that went through it that you realize that there is a need for change. Um, recently interviewed um, a successful entrepreneur who is in his second family, so he's in his he's in in his fifties, and um, he's a consultant to other entrepreneurs now. And it's this time around, helped by his wife <laughs> to give the sources he realized that by working less, by giving less time to his clients, he was actually bringing them more value because he was focusing on what really matters. And at the same time, he was available for his, his five months old. He's got a five months old as well. Um, and he, we were both discussing that it's, it sounds so counterintuitive, right? That you're gonna spend less time at work, but you're gonna be delivering more value. And it's, yeah. You can only, it's only through listening to stories like that that you can start deciding to make the change that there is, there is something else. There is another system in place. There is something else than trying to spend as many hours as possible on the job. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I teach to my student uh, on, or to my client, a client on a one-to-one -one basis and student on my uh, online training. Um, it's that, Productivity, we feel like being productive is always getting more done. And I think that's a misconception about productivity. Mm -hmm. Being productive is working on the right things and getting the right things done. And that's aligned to the Pareto rule, uh, the 80-20 rule. Um, I think, uh, I mean, the 80-20 rule is pretty, uh, pretty famous, but a lot of people don't really understand it. Um, it's 20% of your effort will drive 80% of your results. So a lot of people say, oh, okay, it's, it's great. That sounds great. And I kind of agree with that, but knowledge is not enough. Knowing that rule is not enough. You need to apply it. So look at everything that you do and try to identify this 20% of your to-do list that will drive 80% of the result. And that's, uh, that's a rule that is scientifically proven yes like when you when you look at it and that's in everyday life like 80 percent of the time you're using 20 percent of the apps on your smartphone when you think about it yeah 80 percent of the time you are uh you are wearing just 20 percent of your wardrobe because there are so <laughs> many yeah there is so many clothes that you uh, that you have in your wardrobe that you never actually really use or wear and you always constantly reusing and wearing the same and uh, and there are so many other examples uh, that you you can apply the 80 20 rule to and, and I think um, and most of us are familiar with the, with the 80 20 rule and sometimes the issue is in realizing that sometimes the activities that make more um, outputs they change all the times and so we rely on our 
I don't know, maybe we did an assessment a year ago on what were the key activities to focus on, but now the landscape has changed, but we still, we still, we're still driven by habits, basically, and we haven't re-challenged or reassessed those activities. So, is there a, so you say you do this type of reassessment when you have big um, life events. Do you recommend other ways or other times to, to reassess your it items for the Pareto rule? Um, I don't have any um, any rule of thumb of how, of how many times you need to assess, but I, I really agree with you. Uh, whenever your role is changing or your environment mm -hmm. is changing, um, you need to be able to uh, to welcome change. Yeah. And when you welcome change, you need to reassess the priorities constantly. Yes, um, there is there is something that is. Um, <clears throat> that is the enemy of performance is always the, the constant thinking of we've always worked that way right and yeah, <laughs> yeah you, that right yeah i can see it on your smile you you hear it all the time and i hear it all the time too um yeah. so whenever i hear that we've always worked that way that's the answer when i ask why are you doing this yeah then behind there is always inefficiencies and there is yeah. always room for finding uh, more productivity behind. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you always need to, to be able to change. And I think there is, a, there is a great book about change management that I really recommend. It's very easy. I like easy books. I don't like reading. Uh, I always have Audible's <laughs> Audible you don't, account. You don't um, like reading? Oh, wow, because you, you do so many book recommendations. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Audible. Audible is like, <laughs> I love Audible. Um, so I actually, only the simple books I'm, I'm reading them uh the uh so it's who moved my cheese oh i never uh, heard, i heard about it but never, never heard, heard no. no i heard about it but never it, read it it's it's a very simple book uh it's from spencer i don't remember the the author but yeah. it's um it's a it's a really cool storytelling about um different people in a maze uh and um so people and mice in a maze and they're constantly moving the cheese around in that, in that maze and you have different characters that have um, different way to respond to change and uh, that's you can very easily make the parallel with the corporate environment or in your life Personal whenever life. you have a change meaning the cheese is moving and you know how people are drawn to finding the cheese because you and I are both French we know that and we love cheese um, and um, whenever the, the cheese is moving, you have different ways of respond to where to, to this change. And you have, you can see, I don't want to spoil it for you. You have more successful reaction to change and some that are less successful. Does it matter the type of cheese you use though? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. My, my, my partner Sherry just said earlier, uh, that's kind of out of topic. She, she said, we have so much cheese in the fridge, but we don't have enough bread to eat it. So <laughs> I think that's a very easy to solve issue. Easy problem to solve. Yeah, just to going back on, um, you know, what key activities to, to focus on and to do reassessment. I, I found out, so after working 10 years as a change management consultant and innovation management consultant, I found out that um, going to monthly uh, reflection or review of like so now every month so I, I, re, I do reflection every day and then i do a weekly reflection and then i do a monthly reflection and i find that with daily reflection your 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 key objective don't change so every month i've got a set date where i go okay this is a time where i reassess my goal and objective for the quarter and i see how am i doing on, on this and um, I know it sounds very anal, <laughs> but it really, 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 like, I, I do agree with the comment that you made at the beginning that routine is really important for us. It's important for kids, but it's also important for us because it requires less wasting of time and waste for our brain to think about what we're going to be doing. If we know that, for me, it's always the 28th of the month. I know that on the 28th of the month, I'm going to be uh, reassessed. So that really helped me um, um, to do that. Um, all right. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very great recommendation. Uh, right. Constantly reassessing, that's for sure. So, um, 
we're about to, to get near to, to the end. And you hinted at um, the two things that you do. You do uh, one-on-ones with your clients, so they're corporate clients, but do you also, you also do um, uh, personal clients as well? Uh, so what I do, I do one-on-ones, one-on-one coaching and uh, online training. I'm currently preparing an online training that uh, I will launch the, the beta version in January, in January next uh, next year. So it's uh, in in less than two months. Uh, so I can talk through that a little bit if you yeah, go want for to. It. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, so um, basically it's a program that I designed from uh, using some uh, proven methodology that I've been using as a Lean Six Sigma Black Belt uh, in corporate environment. Um, designed to help overwhelmed professionals that are working too much, that are working 50 to 60 hours a week, uh, and I, they don't know how to, um, how to um, be more productive in their, in their work life or also in their personal life. In order to uh, in order to spend more time with their kids, in order to spend more time on their passion, in order to spend more time on whatever is important for them, or just taking care of them. So this program is designed. It's an eight weeks program. Mm-hmm. It's designed to help you go from 50 to 60 hours a week to 40 hours a week or less, uh, depending on your ability and your your flexibility in your corporate job, mm-hmm. uh, so that you can save 10. To 20 hours uh, a week uh, for everything that is important to you. So at the end of the year, it's a thousand hours that you save, Jeez, yeah. uh, which is which is a whole month back of your time in a year. And so imagine what you can do kids, yeah. on whatever is important for you. It's not necessarily designed for parents, uh, but also for people that do not necessarily have kids uh, and that want to just start a side business and they want to carve out 10 to 20 hours a week uh, in order to work on their side business to leave their corporate job that's also designed for that uh, so i'm really excited about this program cool uh, i put my whole heart into it and uh, i'm excited to launch it in january are they going to be video based uh, you're going to do uh, video comfortable as well I have that there's going to be work. yeah content on the video, uh, audios, also some slides, uh, PowerPoint slides, and uh, assessment exercise and group coaching to help. I'm working also on some bonus to have some one-on-one. Perfect, cool, that's a really good combo. Cool, excellent, so where can we find you? We said um, uh, the Time Flies uh, YouTube channel, where else? So you can, you can find me on my uh, website. It's www.timeflies.us uh, or on my YouTube channel, uh, Time Flies Time Management. Uh, just search that in, uh, in the YouTube mm-hmm. search bar. And I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn, uh, Hugo Donat, uh, and on Instagram, Hugo Time Flies. So Excellent. That's, um, choose any of these and uh i'm pretty excited about the youtube channel almost hitting a thousand subscriber uh, so good job come in the next yeah so come uh, come and uh, watch my some of my videos some of the things that we covered today i cover them uh, in some of the yeah. videos yeah yeah i really recommend that youtube channel it's really really nice done and you get to see uh, lucas from time to time <laughs> yeah that's true he's my assistant <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you so much for your time hugo Thank you, Julien. That was a a real pleasure. Merci beaucoup. (laughs) De rien.